I started off by talking about existential panic. Um, and I think with some of the things that I've been talking about, it's pretty obvious why this has to get brought up, why the issue of existential panic is so important. Um, see, when you start questioning things at this level, when you start sort of questioning whether or not consciousness is a positive or a negative value state, uh, you're getting into some pretty weird territory. Now, if you're able to sort of discipline yourself to the point where you're really just speculating and it doesn't somehow spill over into everyday life, if you don't actually allow the implications of this to sort of get into the workaday life that we all live in, you know, getting out of bed in the morning, going to work, whatever it is that we do over the course of a day, you can do it. And this is why I think so many of these contemplative, um, mystical, monastic kind of uh, groups or movements or uh, orders or whatever always say you need self-discipline. Uh, and because if, if you dabble in stuff like this, I think that it, <laughs> there actually is a good possibility that you can kind of lose it. You can, I don't know, have some sort of existential crisis that lands you in the bug house for a while. It's possible. Um, I won't say that that's likely to happen to everybody, but uh, people that <clears throat> that write about it do and do sort of mention that um, that this is a possibility, and people like Sapfi uh, or uh, various other writers, Kierkegaard and uh, Nietzsche and that, they sort of say, okay, um, this is not to be toyed with, this whole thing. Uh... Now, I guess I've been thinking about it for so long that the edge of this kind of thing has been dulled to a certain extent, but I think that, um, in a sense, what you're doing is when you start to get this, when you start to question things at this level, you sort of, you're kicking away all the props that you, you've built, uh, or that have been built for you, consciously or not, over the years since you were born, uh, that help you cope with the world around you. Now, all of this um, doesn't alter the fact that these are props. The fact that, that I see all this and I work with this all the time and I go to bed every night and I wake up and it's all still there. Yeah, that doesn't alter the fact that that's still a prop. It doesn't alter the fact that when I look up at the sky, it goes on forever. Okay, I've gotten used to that fact. Uh, my mind can't wrap itself around that, but I look up and there's a blue canopy up there. Um, I know that I'm going to die. Um, but my mind has sort of put that knowledge in its place. Now, when you start thinking about the basic existential issues, you're, you're sort of deliberately uh, uh, rubbing at that healing wound, I guess, is one metaphor, to sort of make it raw again so you can see what it is. So, you, you know, watch out with if, uh, if it starts to bleed again, because uh, the, the consequences could be, you know, inconvenient, shall we say? Um... Now, we were talking about the afterlife. Now, I don't even know if we could even... Like, I brought that up in the context of the afterlife, but I don't really know if it really has to be framed in that way. Um, let's just... We're talking about the basic value of consciousness. Is it good or bad? You know, is it something that we want to exist or something that we hope sort of goes poof, gone when we die? Again, I suspect that that's what happens. Um, my subconscious mind tells me that that's what happens. Um, maybe on a certain level, I hope that that's what happens. Um, and I think that we all end up ordering our lives based on some sort of assumption as to what's going on after we die. Uh, but that's just another way of asking the same question. What am I? What is my consciousness? Um, what is its fundamental nature? And what is its relationship to everything else around me? Uh, well... You end up, uh, in, in that situation, understanding that a lot of the props that you've built are inadequate to actually dis uh, to, to adequately coming at this discussion. Um, time and space actually start to sort of get a little bit untenable after a certain point. And again, that, that, there's your existential panic. Um, you haven't really built any new props uh, 
that can that can allow you to approach this subject. You haven't, or the new props don't seem to be ready to hand, because what do we do when we have a problem? Well, we go out and we talk to other people, but you can't really discuss something of this level with somebody else, because again, there's another prop that's of no use to you, language. It's, it's not, it doesn't seem to be up to the task. Or if it is, it, you have to talk and talk and talk and read and read and read and ponder and everything for a very long period of time before you can make any progress at all. Um, trying to f the, the human consciousness trying to figure itself out it is it does seem to be an extremely long road um, but I'm, I'm of the opinion that maybe a long road is the only good one uh, because if you just sort of underestimate the whole thing and you say okay well I'm just gonna go at this intensely and try and figure it all out well you, you can you know you're, you're not doing it in a disciplined way you're not doing it in a way that that can sort of help you navigate around the landmines that you can step on which can you know cause you to have some kind of a breakdown which you know happens to a lot of highly intelligent people the, the, the realization that a lot of what they assume to be absolute truth is not true at all in fact it's all just a creation of this um, now I mentioned um, that whether or not we think that consciousness, or I asked rhetorically, whether or not consciousness is a good or a bad thing. Um, there's <laughs> quite a lot in that question, isn't there? Uh, one could argue that everything is in that. <laughs> um, it's not just even a question of, is existence good or bad? Is consciousness itself, never mind what the outside world is like. Let's say the outside world is, you know, a hell just pure unmitigated hell we're being flogged all the time tossed into you know lava uh, just miserable just read Dante's Inferno and there you go there that, that's consciousness or that's or sorry that's the outside world or imagine that um, I don't know we're in some kind of a heaven uh, where everything's wonderful where anxiety doesn't exist where uh, uh, hunger doesn't exist pain doesn't exist uh, harm doesn't exist none of this stuff exists at all um, that still, in those two scenarios, heaven and hell, or something in between, I guess, like what we live in now, but th that still doesn't answer the question, is consciousness itself a good or a bad thing? Because you can throw me into, say, hell, where I'm getting tormented by demons for all eternity, and that might lead me to conclude that the situation that I find myself in is an undesirable one, to say the least. It's a bad one. But it doesn't really force me to confront the value of my own um, consciousness, my own existence, my own being. Um, I can just sort of think, okay, if I got myself out of this nasty place that I'm in called uh, the Inferno, the <laughs> pit of hell, uh, then maybe things would be a lot better. If I was up there, uh, you know, communing with God, that things would be an awful lot nicer. And of course, this is what Dante says it is. You, you First, you have to go see hell before you can really appreciate the good stuff upstairs. All right. But a lot of people sort of question the, this idea of heaven uh, in a much more fundamental and deeper level. Okay, we know why we don't like hell. Why does the idea of heaven drive us crazy, too? Why is that terrifying as well? Um, after uh, when you know when you ponder it, well, it's this. You, now you're confronted with you. You don't have any more excuses to dislike um, your own consciousness, to dislike your own existence. Uh, you don't have any more excuses to sort of say that being isn't the problem. It's where I happen to be that's the problem. Um, now, when you're up in heaven and everything's perfect, now you're stuck with the big question: um, being itself is that a good thing? Uh, now that's, I think, one of the questions that can truly drive you insane. And um, that came up in a, the comment section of my video yesterday. But let's say that it does drive you insane. Okay, then what? <laughs> you know, uh, you, you, you're in heaven for 10 million years, and after a while the boredom of it, the repetition of it, makes you go insane. All right, you, now you're insane. That hasn't concluded anything. <laughs> You're, you're 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 now insane. You're you're in you're in the afterlife that just keeps going on forever and ever and ever. Now, my way of sort of dealing with that is now it's it's not so much that I have an answer to that objection or, but it, again, it comes down to kicking props away. Um, you've brought the idea of time into uh, being, 
uh, into like the afterlife is more or less just a device here. It doesn't have to be the the afterlife that we're talking about here. Uh, um, you you brought the idea of time itself into uh, the realm of being, into the realm of consciousness itself. Now is time a necessary element in consciousness? And one could even ask, is time even real after a certain point? Uh, I think that it's fair to say that space gets a bit bizarre after a while. Um, you know, once you go beyond a certain point, it sort of shoots off the scale. Time does the same thing when you think about it. Now, apparently we're all imprisoned in this thing called time, but are we? Um, it can be taken from us. We all assume that it is going to be taken from us at death, uh, but we don't. I don't think that we think it through. We don't really consider what that actually means. At the moment of death, we're going to we're going to have this whole time conception ripped from us suddenly, or maybe we will, maybe we won't. I don't know. Um, but we sort of think that at that point, this thing called time will eventually end, at least for us. So I think that what happens is when we when we start thinking about being itself, um, we sort of think, okay, time won't exist at that point, therefore being won't exist. Not necessarily. Um, there's no correlation. There's no re necessary relationship between time and being. Um, there's no relationship necessary be necessarily between consciousness and time. So I think there's your there's your sort of your existential one um, cause for um, existential panic is uh, the idea that um, that time really is infinite, and if being goes beyond simple biological uh, function, if, if if my being, if my consciousness is uh, something that transcends the, this body that I'm living in, then uh, I'm in trouble because I'm going to be around for all eternity. Um, and that could, you know, eventually that's going to grind me down into a state of craziness, into, uh, you know, uh, an eternity of being is just more than anyone or anything can handle. Well, um, again, that's that's you're taking that bit of baggage with you, that thing called time, which you, um, which may not actually have any actual validity, and it's just one of the props that we've created. Um, but trying to think beyond time, this is something that I've been attempting to do for a very long period of time, uh, is to think in terms of a possible sort of state of being in which time does not exist. This is not easy. I get little flashes of it again in uh, moments of, I guess, clarity, Zen moments or whatever, uh, and they're really fascinating. They're, um, what does it mean to just sort of clear your mind of everything and just be, just uh, take things in? Now, moments like that, you sort of get the opposite of existential panic. You get this, whoa, oh yeah, oh I wish I could talk about this, <laughs> and oh I wish I could think about this, but you can't. Uh, it's a, it's kind of a state that you can only sort of be in. Um, but I think that we can actually derive benefit from that because whenever we end up with um, weird, terrifying paradoxes like being stuck in time and space and matter and energy and everything, we can sort of think back to this and sort of go, okay, well, I don't remember what it was like um, because I'm stuck back in this sort of wheel of existence again or whatever you want to call it, this phenomenal universe. But I know that for even an instant, or what may have been an eternity trapped inside of an instant, I don't know, it is possible to sort of step outside of that. It is possible to sort of overcome, or at least get a hint that it's possible to overcome, this phenomenal universe, time, things like that. On a base level, um, all you have to do is... Uh, smoke a bit of weed and you, you see some time distortion taking place sometimes. Okay, that shows you that it's at least possible to step out of time for a second or so or for, you know, a number of hours or whatever. Eventually you have to go back into it. But time, um, stepping out of time and in a way that 
isn't artificial in a way that is a much more controlled environment in a way that you can actually sort of say ok i want to approach this thing of timelessness it's not an easy thing to do and it's not an easy thing to talk about and for an amateur like myself like i have no intention of ever going to a monastery or sitting at the feet of a guru or anything like that you sort of think ok maybe i've taken this philosophy thing as far as i can but not necessarily again you can you can get little flashes of this just enough i might add to overcome the existential panic if if all you're trying to do is deal with existential terror existential fear or existential crisis or existential bias in general you can train yourself to overcome the negative existential states um, if you want more than that i guess you do kind of have to de devote yourself more or less full time with me the whole thing has always been more on the level of an enhancement um, it does seem to improve my quality of life i guess you could say by indulging in these sorts of speculations um, it does actually seem to make my life uh, a lot more enjoyable and it does seem to deal with a lot of the extremely negative issues that i have concrete proof can befall me um, if the problem is here or if the solution is here then that's where you're going to have to try and solve both of them um, if if you're ex like any any sort of existential issues always are inside your own mind or inside your own being you have to sort of work them out in there and um, for me uh, it's always been first of all to maintain some sort of mental emotional health um, but increasingly as I get older and as the, as the mind calms down I guess that happens as you age it does seem to be there's there's some enhancements to be found in there to, to the quality of one's life but boy do you ever have to go through an awful lot of bad stuff or stuff that seems bad before you get here um, this video has been sort of uncharacteristic in that it's just a, a incoherent series of rambles but um, I thought that after all the little sort of vignettes or little flashes that I'd made lately I should actually uh, do this and uh, well, I'm just going to upload it and see where it goes.